When's the next time we'll see you at the shaved head? Uh, I actually just did a movie a little recently where I shaved my head. Um, a film called, I think it's going to be called Blackbird, with Olivia Wilde and um, Eric Bana. I play, uh, I play a fighter, a professional fighter who's getting released from prison, and I shaved my head. It felt good. I love having the shaved heads, but now that I put the work in to grow my hair out a little bit, I think it'll be a while before I take it off again. So you were saying that you do ride outside of the show, and you have for, for a very long time. Yeah, yeah, I grew up riding. My, my big brother is, um, is racist, like speed bikes. So, um, so yeah, we definitely, you know, grew up like riding, riding dirt bikes and stuff. And, yeah, I've, I've always liked being on two wheels. Each bike sort of has its own personality. So what do you ride, and how does that feed into your character? Um, well, that's a great question, actually, but specifically um, with the show. And I actually ride um, a very similar bike that I ride on the show, which is, um, which is a Harley Davidson, but it's set up in a way that you can ride really aggressively and fast as opposed to cruising, which is the way most Harleys are designed. And we're ba our bikes are based on a very famous motorcycle club that is in the real world that we won't say which one, but they ride those bikes because it facilitates being an outlaw, you know? You can, you can evade, capture, and run away from bad guys if you need to, or chase bad guys at high speed if you need to. In the, in the really fundamental difference is most Harleys, you like ride like that with your feet out front, and the bikes that we ride, we have our feet right under us, so we can ride more aggressively, have more control over the bike, and our balance is better, you know? What was it like seeing Ron Perlman in drag for the first time? It was terrifying, and then for him to, you know, try to make out with me, I mean, I'm sure, as many girls can attest to, you know, Ron Krillman coming in for the kiss is a frightening moment in any young girl's life. And so I, um, <clears throat> I experienced that firsthand. Um, I'm in therapy. We're dealing with it. <laughs> and um, Del Toro says that he wants Pacific Rim to be more than just monsters and robots duking it out. So how, how are you guys going to achieve that? How did you guys achieve that? Nothing to do with me. i got to give it... I mean, it, it's all Guillermo. And I... You know, I wouldn't have done this film, really. I'm not a really big monster robot type of guy. Uh, you know, I did the movie because I wanted to work with Guillermo specifically. And, and we talk, I've talked about this a little bit. It's not like a wildly original um, answer that I'm going to give to the question, but it's the truth, is that this business is, is too much of a business, movie business. And I am so more and more aware of, like, the manufactured nature of these films and the like, the the the, the pure commerce involved in making these big pen, tent pole type of movies, and with almost any other director, you would have gotten the sense that it was a money making endeavor. But with Guillermo, it isn't because he loves this stuff. He like wakes up in the morning and if he's got an hour spare he'll draw pictures of monsters like this one comes out of his heart so the end result for the movie is that it has soul and integrity and you know is is like filled with joy and passion and it's not kind of clinical or manufactured in any way and i think you'll really feel that from the first frame of the movie you got a sense of it listening to him talk yesterday that he's so excited about these monsters and these robots that he's created and you know, it's not a giant acting piece. I don't think I like did my the best work I've ever done or anything in this film, but it was a really, really fun to be just part of something so big and, and, and such a spectacle, you know? You said that you're not really a monsters and robots type of guy, so is it safe to say you feel a little out of your element here at Comic Con with all the uh, the the monsters and robots that are walking around everywhere? Uh, I mean, not so much. Uh, I mean, I guess a little out of my element, not in a way that I feel uncomfortable, but in a way that it's very different from the, from the environments that I usually find myself in, for sure. Um, any crazy fan experiences here at Comic-Con? Um, no, it's, you know, it's just a little bit overwhelming um, negotiating through the crowd, you know, and to get in and out of hotels. It's, it's the same thing, you know, as an actor, if you're at all well known, and I'm only a little bit well known, but like if you go to somewhere like Disney, if you see someone in the street in regular life, they're just in their lives and they're like, oh my God, that's that guy from that show. And they come up in a very like respectful and say, I'm so sorry to bother you because they're in their life too and you're in your life. And it's clear that they're, you know, approaching you to stop you from doing whatever you're doing. But say if you're at Disneyland and you get recognized, 
it's almost like people are in like vacation mode and you're just another one of the attractions. And I feel like that is the case here that we're not really human beings here. We're like attractions to be consumed. And there's like an entitlement to our like time and space that I find very difficult. You know, I, I, I'm staying in a hotel that's right downtown and like I would come out and people are just like grabbing me and pulling me. And normally if people are grabbing me and pulling me, it's like a prelude to me knocking them out. So like, <laughs> it's, it's a little bit like you gotta remember, okay, this is all just like nice and fun, you know? <laughs>